Welcome back to the Eric Crown Crypto Channel. Wishing you a happy and start to this nice Sunday. It's a macro Sunday, baby. It's macro Sunday time, and we have macro time frames close and monthly and bi-monthly going to be coming up in the next couple of days here. So it's a major preparation for the very, very long term here to come relative to what we typically talk about on this channel. If you're interested in more short-term time frame analysis, check out yesterday's video. It's kind of the same thing right there. Uh, you know, we got that short to move to the downside of the range, bounce back up, back in the middle, What's new? Nothing's new. Very little's new, as usual on a weekend. Uh, but other than that, I wanted to, once again, humbly request that if you find this content valuable or useful or meaningful, or even if you just hate my face, please do consider liking and subscribing as, uh, well, as, as fair enough. I don't have anything else to add on to that. I want to start this analysis a little bit on a different note here. Uh, we were looking at Dixie um, like a month or two ago as likely to put in a major bounce off the 101 level, which it is doing right now. So I do want to come at this analysis from the relative short term to what we're going to be speaking about in the sense that, hey, if you are looking for Bitcoin and risk on assets to be having a major pullback, you know, this would be the time uh, over these next couple of weeks if it's going to be happening at all. Now, I have significant reservations about a, you know, a one to one relationship between risk on assets and Dixie, which is the dollar's value versus a basket of other fiat currencies value, namely the euro, actually. Uh, but ultimately, you know, if you do want to play that game, this would be indicative that, hey, right now, uh, if you are going to be looking for like a major high on Bitcoin, and, and and again, most major markets, this would be it. And yes, I do think that this one does trade ultimately much higher, um, you know, probably, uh, maybe not probably, but perhaps all the way up to 107 to 108 region. At that point, I'd be on lower high watch and looking for the downtrend to resume. But until then, I wanted to now, I guess we can speak a little bit of the short term on, on, on Bitcoin, you know, the relative short term, I guess over here is where we left off yesterday. There's a test of the downside, boom, pop back up around the top side of the range, not quite there, but you know, still still might make a stab for it. On the daily here, though, uh, I think that this one just basically summarizes um, things incredibly well. Uh, look, below 22,900 on a medium or higher term time frame closing basis, yeah, probably going to be uh, probably going to be seen back down into the mid 21s with bounces along the way, um, and uh, perhaps even all the way down to low 20. Uh, again, this would be the time to, at least in my opinion, if we are going to see a major downside move, it'd probably be happening over this next week or two basis. Um, of course, that plays into the Gaussian channel that we're looking at as well, which over here, let me just bring it up. Where is it? Here we go. We can see over here on the Gaussian channel on the five day time frame that, uh, that yes, you know, Bitcoin did get rejected by the median, or sorry, not the median, but the mean band, the mean, mean band uh, that we saw on Friday's closure. So, you know, uh, as long as Bitcoin is living below there on a five day closing basis, risk remains to the downside. And yes, I want to be very abundantly clear that if, you know, if you do want to be bearish, this is the exact area that you'd be looking at it from. But when we look at the higher term time frames, the macro time frames here, if you will, uh, I think that that picture is a lot, is, is is, is a lot more clear there. And I think that there's a legitimate possibility that uh, we don't see that happen. Um, now, uh, now, when I'm talking about that, I want to once again highlight the number 23,800. Again, that number will move down as time goes onwards and forwards. But if Bitcoin can pop back above there, that to me would be a good indication that we're going to see a nice major move uh, in the month of March, probably somewhere around 27 to 28,000 bucks. Uh, anyways, popping back into it over here, uh, or I guess we already kind of got this one right here. Uh, now let's get into the heart of this analysis. So I want to start this one off um, from a fundamental angle. I want to first be looking at the MVRV uh, um, uh, indicator over here, which is a fundamentally fundamentally based indicator. It's the it's the uh, it's a total cap versus realized cap basically. And what do you need to know about this? Well, what you need to know about this is you know how it's been operating in in a uh, in a historical sense where we've seen this indicator come down into this green zone here uh, several times in, in Bitcoin's past. Um, in fact, to be exact, one, two, three, four, five prior times. We're on time number six over here. And of those uh, five prior times, when it popped back above the green zone, so again, first, you know, goes below it, uh, goes below it right here, boom, pops back, uh, you know, after kind of spending a lot of time below there right here. Well, that is is where these rallies have really started to take off um, on the macro scale. So you can see these green vertical bars representing those regions. And the reason why I bring this up right now is because as we spoke about over the past couple of weeks, we got kind of exactly what we were looking for. Um, for. First test reject, boom, come back down. And then this week, it's going to have a legitimate chance to well, close above the upside of this one. Um, so if that does happen, that would be a yet another thing that do, that does suggest that Bitcoin already has the low end, the macro low end, that is, um, 
and uh, and you know we can probably expect some sideways to upside here. Uh, again, just kind of zeroing in on all these past um, uh, uh, iterations. Um, yeah, there are some downside moves after that, but generally speaking, it was up and to the right, and, uh, and, and it was higher lows on the downside. So my main um, thing here is that if Bitcoin does see a downside move, it's very likely to be a higher low, and anything above twenty thousand bucks is you know is is well long term good for the bulls as, as far as I'm concerned as well. Uh, so again, you know, we have this, um, which is pending confirmation today. Yes, but it's very, 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 very close to it. And, uh, and basically any sort of a closure here or higher, as long as Bitcoin doesn't break down to the fucking hell and beyond, um, you know, that very likely will happen tonight. So we'll, we'll follow back up on that tomorrow. Uh, if there is something new to be speaking about, but for right now, it's definitely on watch. The next big thing would be on the monthly time from over here. Uh, of course, at the end of every month, uh, I like to look at the accumulation and distribution indicator of which this indicator is called all of the macro tops and all the macro bottoms uh, in Bitcoin's history with the slope changes in the extreme red and extreme green zones. Uh, in this case, I have on this chart marked off the prior times where we've seen a slope change in the red zone from down to up. And these green vertical bars correlate with that area. Yes, there would be another one over here for 2011, but I don't have the full chart for that one right now right on this particular one. But yes, it does exist. Um, you can see again, uh, the low is in. The low is in uh, a little bit prior to that. Yeah, in some cases, um, you know, we did see a retest around that low in 2015. You could say that. And in 2019, you could say the old Rona dump over here was a retest of that as well. But ultimately, um, you know, the low is in. It was not violated, especially on a closing basis. And we're gonna have a chance to see this. This one um, do the same thing at the end of this month. So we saw the greatest reduction in the downside slope from January to February. So if we are going to see it change uh, to an upside slope, you know, March has a legitimate chance for that. So we'll follow up again on that on March 1st. Um, which will be Wednesday, I believe. And I also want to highlight again that uh, CME already does have a positive slope. Now, CME does not have the same history uh, that we see on the index, obviously, so I trust it a lot less. But in general, CME does have better signals, if you will. So you know, maybe that's a pre uh, preliminary indication that we will see this one uh, flip back around. Um, and of course, also on that note, I also took a measurement for every time that the accumulation distribution indicator turned red, and then measure that to the next macro low uh, or the next major low. And that represents all these measurements right here. And found that the average correction from that time to the next major low was 61 spot 34%. What's really interesting about that is, well, from the current uh, on the current iteration, from the time where it turned right over here to the to what would be the macro low, 61 spot 63%. <laughs> like really on the nose there. Um, again, you know, pa uh, past iterations only four, um, four lot right there. So it's like, it's not that much, but I do think that that was rather interesting. Again, you know, historically speaking, the macro low is very likely in. And if Bitcoin is going to see a downside move from here, it's probably going to be an opportunity. That's kind of the picture that I'm looking at right now, or the picture that, that this is all painting um, as of the current moment. Anyways, moving on now, we can get into this chart. Uh, this is the hash ribbons indicator. Um, you know, again, just want to go over it very quickly here. The weekly for this time frame. Uh, anytime that we've seen these blue buy signals on the hash ribbons indicator, another fundamentally based indicator. Uh, in fact, the past three have all been fundamentally based. Um, the prior low before that blue buy was the low before never getting violated again. So for example, you have this one over here, right? Prince blue, okay, that th this low over here, which would be 3200, obviously never violated ever again. That has been true for 16 out of the past 18 iterations. Uh, the two iterations where this was not true were actually some of the most recent ones. In fact, the ones over here in 2021, August uh, at 38,000 bucks, and over here uh, right before the Rona dump uh, in December 2019. Uh, regardless of that, you know, we did see the blue buy signal fire off over here, which would imply again that, uh, you know, 17,000. 18,000 basically is the low, uh, if you will, or, or if you're going to be going off of the likelihood um, in, in alignment with those probabilities. Uh, moving on to the next fundament, fundamentally based indicator, we do see that the Bitcoin stock to flow rainbow indicator. That's right. It's fucking LGBTQ time, baby. And it's blue. It's blue. And what does blue mean within the context of the past? Well, usually means that lows are basically in or lows are about in, you know, in this case over here, did trade a little bit lower, that's fine. Um, and on the macro scale, things are getting ready to trend up into the right, which is nice. 
uh, nice for the Bulas at least. Um, so again, you know, this one started to turn dark blue back in August. Yeah, Bitcoin dropped a little bit further after that, which is kind of what we've seen in all these past ones, by the way. Yeah, with the lows being over here as well, I mean, again, like it would seem likely. Uh, and if you are kind of looking at the totality of these blue markers here, um, we're pretty much we're getting pretty mature within this one. We're probably a little bit past the halfway mark of it, and certainly past the halfway mark of it. The lows have always been in in the past, um, even on this first iteration over here, which would be still which would be kind of questionable due to the um, uh, infancy of Bitcoin at that time. Uh, even even it did hold true there as well. I should go back on it. There you go. Anyways, uh, moving on now. Um, this one more of a technical, I suppose, and we can start to get into this now. Uh, the Pi cycle indicator. Basically, the Pi cycle indicator has been really fucking good at calling the tops and the bottoms. Uh, funnily enough, it's been almost it's been nearly perfect in calling the tops on the macro scale. Uh, the more recent one did you know Bitcoin trade a little bit higher as far as price goes, uh, but basically you know it's, it was saying sixty five thousand versus sixty nine thousand. I mean, close enough, close enough as far as I'm fucking concerned in that case. I mean, like <laughs> it's like, hey Crown, I think that indicator is not right. It didn't call it exactly to the cent. Throw it away. How dare you put this in my face? It's like, look, likelihoods here. Uh, but the same thing on the bottom side as well with the Pi cycle lows. Um, you know, this one over here calling the low to the T. This one over here calling the low to the T. Uh, this one over here not calling the low to the T. But similar to the high where things did trade a little bit higher later on, um, but just very, very slightly higher before coming down. This one traded a little bit lower a couple months later or a few months later. But... So far, so good. So I would say, you know, maybe that would be another good indication, um, you know, that macro lows are in and pullbacks here are to be looked at as opportunities. Um, and again, uh, I wanted to highlight this as well. In past iterations where you've seen the low print and then Bitcoin's grabbed onto the red moving average here, which is the slowest one, uh, it's kind of like to have used that. It's kind of like to have used... <sighs> English mouth. They kind of like to have a doozy tapa. Can't fucking speak, man. Anyways, um. <laughs> Anyways, over here, yeah. So you can see, you know, once it crossed above it, it likes to kind of, you know, hold on to it for the rest of the macro bull, if you will. Uh, and what do you know? Last week it did close above there. And where is it currently hanging at right now? Uh, 22,500. So fair enough. You know, can you get what's below? Yeah, but ultimately. Um, has operated pretty damn well in that regard. In this case over here, you know, cross above it, and then onwards and forwards, off to the races, same thing over here. Um, and in this case, yeah, right now it's again at about 21.3, or sorry, 22.3-ish. We'll be moving down actually to probably about 22 even. So again, you might see a short-term downside move, but I think that these are opportunities probably. Um, that's just my personal opinion. It's not financial advice. I'm not a financial advisor. Just don't do the fucking rocket ship emojis anymore, I guess. Um, <laughs> anyways, uh, moving on now. Let's go back over here. I need this chart. And let's go over to the bi-monthly chart. So something completely new here. Uh, the bi-monthly chart is printing something of interest as we can see potential hidden bullish divergence coming in from the 2018-2019 lows to what would be the 2022-2023 lows right here. If Bitcoin closes basically anywhere above like 22000 bucks. That will be confirmed by end of month, um, uh, which I do think is rather interesting. In fact, you'll even notice that on the on the BBWP, when the BBWP actually starts to cross the moving average right here and right here, potentially even right here, it's going to have a chance to do it as well. That's when uh, the lows were in, and you know the fun the fun begins. Um, that's cringe, cringe worthy, uh, but yeah. Same thing on the monthly. You know, we've already seen this monthly hit and bullish divergence. Um, we even saw the same thing in the 2011 to 2015 cycle over here. So all prior cycles have actually bottomed on monthly uh, hidden bullish divergence, um, which is rather interesting. Um, also, the monthly jewel does not have its its light blue anymore, but it is still playing off of this regression here, which again would be an indication um, of hidden bullish divergence. And you know, it's still a few days left to go till the end of the month. But if Bitcoin closes below like 22 or sorry 23500. Uh, you probably won't see this one turn that cyan color. So if it would turn cyan, that would be the next sort of uh, major step for me to be looking at this one as, again, just kind of looking up and to the right, um, you know, si sideways and up basically. But uh, but for right now, yeah, it doesn't actually have that. So 
Uh, that that even be saying that uh, you know Bitcoin probably does make a, a try back above twenty three five um before the end of the month and if it does that would be a really good indication that we're going to see continuation in march uh rather than later on rather than a pullback first like like a, a you know a much greater pullback moving on to the next one uh same thing with the monthly you know with sorry with the monthly stochastic oscillator look um doesn't need to be anything more complicated than this uh <laughs> one two three four drives of, of hidden bullish effort and started across the upside all pretend, all all uh, prior crosses to the upside in the critical zone have actually been uh, after the macro low before getting ready for a major massive moves to the upside. In fact, uh, of those three prior um, ones in the past, we've seen about a 250% move off the lows in the next um, in the next like three months to in, well in the next three months to a year. So it's not actually that helpful. Um, but basically, again, it would be saying the same thing. Um, and, and in all of these prior cases, the low was or actually, no, in this case over here did retest the low, but I was going to say that the low was in, um, anyways, monthly stochastic also remains the upside as long as Bitcoin's above like 17,000. So still looking pretty good. Um, what's the next one? Uh, yeah. And then I think we'll end on maybe, uh, I didn't even talk about, or we did talk about the five day, but whatever, uh, I will end on this one as well. Um, you know, I, I, I do want to once again give some uh, highlight to this particular chart just because, well, I think it deserves it. What, what are we looking at right here? We're looking at the silver cross on Bitcoin. Silver cross is going to be the 21 yellow moving average right here, 21 exponential moving average, uh, I should say, the yellow one right there, versus the green 55 exponential moving average. When the lower period, the 21 cross above the higher period, you have silver cross. Um, and, you know, I've, I've measured all the past ones in Bitcoin's history of which there are. There are eight, and of those eight ones, five of them actually just led on to new all-time highs, I believe. So more than 50%, which is kind of interesting. Um, and uh, and of those, in, in, in of those uh, prior iterations, the five ones that did head on to new all-time highs um, did have an average return of about 56% on that first major move. So obviously that's not like the full move, but um, but like that first major move that we saw over the next couple months on average. Average days would be over here, 64 days. A lot of variance in that one, I should say. 25 um, uh, was a standard deviation. So, you know, maybe as little as like 40 days or as much as uh, 80 days, but you get the point, um, you know. It would be suggestive that uh, Bitcoin has a higher probability of trading up from here than not. Um, but like I said, five out of eight were winners in that case. Three out of eight were failures, like complete failures. Um, and we can we can see them right here. There, I'd, I'd call this one a failure. Is you know less than a uh, twenty percent move. This one over here was a zero percent move, basically. Uh, sorry, and I mean to like the next high. So this was a twelve and a half percent move. This was a zero percent move. This was a negative seven uh, percent, seven and a quarter percent move right there. Um, but I thought that there was something a little bit more revealing about that when we actually go into the data and found that on average, um, you know, on on average the days that have taken for the failures have been oops, yeah it's been 16. well from the signal given to where we're at right now we are working on hey what the fucking bastard is going on here hold on okay we are on uh we're actually gonna be working on day number 15 at the end of today so this would be day number 15. um so what does that essentially suggest? It, is, it suggests that the longer that Bitcoin um, just doesn't break back down below about 21,500, let's say, or 21,800 actually to be exact, is the last higher low, um, you know, the more and more likely that this is not going to be a failure. In fact, I'd even go as far to say that, hey, uh, it's probably unlikely because thus far we've already seen, you know, a 15% move, which is greater than all of the prior uh, failure moves, um, you know, ever got to the upside. Uh, so... You know, again, do keep that in mind. Um, but hey, you know, if it, if it hangs here without breaking below that prior low at 21.7, 21.8 region on a higher time frame closing basis, um, let's say like another, I don't know, another uh, five to 10 days, it's very unlikely that, that this one's going to be a, uh, 
this one's going to be um, a failure. Uh, and we could probably look at that average return over the next couple months here as you know something of, of interest, which again would be in like the, the mid 50s, I think, which would put Bitcoin in the shallow $30,000 territory, which actually is exactly where the 200 cent moon average is on this time frame uh, at you know hovering below like 34,000 bucks right now. So uh, that you know that will change over time, obviously. But uh, I look at this as viable as long as again Bitcoin's above the last higher low, twenty one eight. Um, below twenty one eight, very likely to see twenty thousand bucks. But even then, I would still go as far to say that you know based off the other things that we're looking at today, low is very likely in. Probably be another um, major opportunity. You know, think about it. Like if Bitcoin were to make a move, uh, you know, a major move down there, um, somewhere down around twenty thousand bucks, fulfill the CME gap uh, that we actually saw from uh, a while ago. You know, the general feeling within this market would be once again like ten thousand. No, ten thousand is too bullish. Ten thousand is too bullish. Time for eight thousand. Nope, eight thousand is way too bullish. Don't be silly, you fuck. It's gonna be five thousand or three thousand or whatever the fuck thousand or zero, maybe even zero. So. You know, um, that would be good for, you know, well, we'll get to that one a little bit later. Anyways, I think that's a good place for me to be leaving off on this particular video. Um, you know, long term, I, I still don't really have any reason to believe that Bitcoin doesn't have the major lows in, or it, at least I shouldn't be putting my opinion on this. Look, I'm just looking at the probabilities. I'm looking at statistics. It would seem more likely to me than not. You make your own decisions for yourself, obviously, because you're a rational and uh, and lovely human adult being, I think. Um, and <laughs> I'll be signing off on that note. As always, I want to be uh, shilling the old buy bit there. They got 0% on maker fees for derivative contract orders with the link in the description below. And other than that, I want to wish you the best of the best. Take care, much love, and see you hopefully soon.